this main gantry plate here has been sort of at the back of my mind as a cause for concern in that it's slightly bent and has a slight bend so the the middle is a little bit lower than the rest of it there it's really hard to get this on camera I'm afraid as is that wouldn't really be good enough to put the linear rails on uh, so I inquired with a shop here, a local engineering shop, about getting this face milled and also the um, the smaller one for the Z, Z axis. And you can see I've, I just took it into the shop to show them. Um, and they said they can do that, but it's not going to be until the end of January and also it's going to be a little bit on the pricey side. Uh, so I thought what I might try is something which I probably should have tried first. And that is what happens when we clamp these other pieces down like that. So these pieces here, although this piece does have a slight bend if we look down at it that way as well, actually not bad considering it's only 10 mil. This edge of it though is perfectly straight because it was laser cut. And this piece here, if we go over here, so this is, um, we're looking at these two pieces here. And if this edge is perfectly straight, and we clamp it against that one, which has a little bit of a bend in it, it actually straightens it out fairly well. There's a gap there at the moment where the bend, so you can see the grass, well, oh, that looks terrible. It actually doesn't seem that bad in person, but this, this camera zoom is making it look really bad there. But anyway, you can see the grass through there. And I'm just going to tighten down this clamp here, not even that much, really. Okay, so that middle clamp is now tightened down. I got some of these nicer steel clamps uh, instead of the crappy cheapos that I was using before. And if we look down here now, well, it's just really nothing to be seen. It's just flat all the way down. Well, there's a tiny bit of a gap there, but remember the, the surface that we're clamping is like this. So it's a little bit rough there. Um, but now if we look yeah, it looks way, way better. So, I think I'm just going to try this for starters. And if it doesn't work out, I can always dismantle it and then um, take it in to get the face milling done anyway. As well as that fairly large plate on the back here that can do that straightening of the main plate, there's also this smaller rib that goes on the front like that, which would also contribute to that straightening because this also has a very nice straight laser cut edge on the back. Unfortunately, it's not as deep. Uh, it's only 28 millimeters out here, but hopefully that also will help a little bit. Um, so that's that's this bit on the front here. And the reason that this is here is to provide stability or rigidity in that dimension for that rail. And the reason it's not at the back is because the motor is sliding along here very close. But it occurred to me today, I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner either, the motor is not very tall down here, and the drag chain could be put um, right out on the edge here, it's not very wide, so it's only going to be about that wide. So there's a whole area in here that we could put another rib, or whatever you want to call this kind of a thing, all the way from about there, all the way to, say, there. And I have some aluminium channel, um, bigger than this one, this is I think 25, but I have 36 millimeter channel uh, like that. And you could probably put maybe even two pieces of that on the back there as a slight extra little bit of reinforcing, because these are quite straight, I think. I'm pretty sure they are. <laughs> Every one I've seen is very straight anyway. Uh, so I might think about doing that. That shouldn't be too hard. Some of these pieces, I really want to have them square on here so that when I put it down, they just sit there at 90 degrees nicely. Um, and a lot of them are kind of like that because I, I just did a quick sanding on here using the belt sander, but inevitably you end up with a little bit of rounding on there no matter how hard you try. So what I'm going to try and do to fix that is I've smoothed off this whole area here where the uh, holes had little ridges on them. So that's all nice and smooth and I've just clamped a metal square onto there and I'm just putting sandpaper on there <laughs> you can see where this is going and I'm just holding being very careful to hold the plate up to the square over there and I'm just 
sanding like this and it takes quite a while and it makes a horrible noise sometimes when this like scrapes uh, sort of vibrates a bit and it uh, yeah it takes a long time and makes me feel like a caveman compared to some other methods I've seen people using on YouTube uh, but it does give a very good result at the end of it I know they say a poor workman blames his tools, but sometimes the tools just need to be blamed. I did another shopping trip today and I uh, picked up some more clamps because I was feeling a little bit understocked in the clamp department. And also picked up uh, some more things to check square with, like this thing and that larger uh, square thing there. And uh, yeah, the one that I was using yesterday turns out to be not very good. I've just been checking them all against each other to see which ones agree the most. And the worst one here is this one here, which is Craftrite. That brand there, which I think is something, just some uh, Chinese brand maybe. And um, at the top, it's touching right there. And at the bottom, there's like a one and a quarter millimeter gap. Probably even, maybe even a little bit more actually on that one. And if I turn the blade part around, I can get it slightly better, but it's still not great. Uh, so that's the worst one. Then probably the next worst one is this one. Not sure where this Fuller brand comes from. Is that a Chinese one as well? Um, I wasn't really expecting too much from this. It was quite cheap and it's also plastic there. But it's not too bad. Then the next one is this one, surprisingly. I thought that would be better, but um, it's a, just, a, just a smidgen off, but I think it'll be perfectly good enough. And then the best ones, uh, these ones here, this is another fuller steel, though. That's very good. And then these ones here from the US called Empire. So I think the uh, Americans know what they're doing. These two here match up with each other absolutely perfectly. And also with that fuller. So I'm going to say that these three here are perfect uh, for what I need to do. And the other ones, I'll just have to keep in mind that they might not be. And I just remembered that this crappy step drill that I got was also a craft right one. And this is, sure enough, made in China to a price. And this, um, basically, as soon as I took it out of the packet there, I was a little surprised. It, it doesn't have, really have any sharp feel to this edge where it's supposed to be cutting. It almost feels like kind of rounded over. So yeah, this was a complete waste of money. Mind you, it was all cheap, all the craft right stuff. So, I mean, you get what you pay for, huh? Oh, and while I'm ranting about price and quality, I should also point out that these craft right, um, the clamps were pretty good. I have no complaints about those. And I should also point out that these really good squares were very cheap. So you just never really know until you get something and try it out. Okay. So now I'm, <laughs> I'm using the small square now, the one that's good, to go back and tweak all those pieces I did yesterday. Uh, probably doesn't need to be done. It was only like one degree off, but... I figured I might as well do it since I've discovered a slight issue and I'm also kind of procrastinating doing other stuff because I don't really know what I should do next. There's no instructions for this thing. <laughs> That's a problem. I got some of these jigsaw blades that say special for aluminium. So let's see how they go. Okay, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Now that I've realized how terrible that square was that I was using the other day, I resurfaced this area here and I put some nice supposed to be square edges on the on the sides of it and I'm checking with my new squares and if I line up the top along there and then we look down here you can see that the edge of the smaller ruler there uh, is actually able to go under the under the other one so it's pushing up against the wood underneath it like that so it's a good millimeter and a half or so off 
but it should be here, right? It should be just touching the edge, but it can go all the way under. Um, yeah, so I'll do my readjustments again, and I'm going to do a little bit of milling of aluminium again today, just on here, which is going to be this piece, because this is going to be 6mm aluminium, that is this front bit there. And I'm going to do this one because the precision's not really that critical, not as much as it is with the plates in here that I was doing the other day. Um, that'll give me just a bit more practice with doing aluminium. Oh, and I got some of this uh, as per um, somebody in the comments recommended. It's basically just ethanol, but um, it's a little bit sloppy, so it's not going to not going to just immediately run away everywhere. Um, and it has sort of moisturizer in it, in it as well, which is not ideal, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, not really. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever that is. We'll see how it goes anyway. I could also just try methylated spirits, which I think is the same thing as ethanol. Okay, just did the holes there, and they turned out pretty nice. I'm trying some different settings. Um, half the feed rate and twice the step down. So it's cutting two millimeters depth at a time. So that's only three passes. And I didn't do the finishing pass for, the, for this one. Usually what it does after the adaptive is uh, it goes around the side one more time to take off that last like tenth of a millimeter at the edge but it's kind of slow because it does it every level like every millimeter depth or two millimeters depth in this case it will go around the perimeter it doesn't really need to do that so I told it not to do that and I'm gonna do a single like profile pass at full depth afterwards when everything's done to tidy up those edges and also to cut through because it seems to leave a tiny little bit there all the time but um, yeah so I need to do that final profile anyway so I might as well just get the final profile to also do be a finishing pass as well. Um, now what I'm going to do next is I discovered a setting in FreeCAD called um, Adaptive Profiling. So we're going to try this and the idea with this is that instead of cutting a deep channel that's only the same width as the cutter, 4mm in this case, it's going to cut a little bit wider and it's just a little bit more interesting kind of a thing and I've never tried it before so wish me luck Well, this is taking an awfully long time, so while it was an interesting thing to try, and it's interesting to watch, like it's more enjoyable to see it doing that than it is just going along in a straight line, uh, I don't think I really want to do this much in the future, unless there's some good reason. The vacuum cleaner is by far the noisiest part of this whole thing. Okay, here's the result of that. Turned out pretty damn good actually. And because of the wide channel, there were only about five times where it just briefly seemed to clog up a little bit. But because of the way it's going backwards and forwards, between each moment where it moves, where, where it does a cut, then it has to come back. 
and when it comes back it's not cutting so there's a brief moment there where any chips that were jammed in can have a chance to flick free so it was never clogged for more than one stroke of a cut which is really nice um, and I just left all the chips sitting here so that we could have a look at them because I tried a few um, coolant slash lubricant <laughs> methods one was the hand sanitizer which is this one I don't think that's really that great because of the extra stuff that they have in it like the glycol or whatever or the other things were so even like 10 minutes later it's still oops sorry it's still kind of sticky a little bit together so I don't think I'll be using that too much um, this little bunch of stuff here is where I used methylated spirits or I, I think it's just ethanol and they're nice and dry and clean now. It's, it's just like a pile of dry dust, which is quite nice. So it, um, it's less likely to stay there and stick things up the next time the tool comes around. Um, although you'd want to be clearing it away still. Um, but when it was wet, it still did tend to make the chips stay a little bit too close to the cutter for comfort. And then over here we have, uh, this was isopropyl alcohol, which is basically, we got the same result as the methylated spirits. And as for the chips themselves, as far as I can tell, they're pretty nice. I'll just put a size comparison thing here, or a ruler, you might call it. So it's millimeters there. And um, on one side the chips are bright and shiny and on the other side they're kind of uh, like a matte finish almost frosted looking don't know how well that's going to show up but um, I think this is pretty good right so here's that cleaned up a bit it has a really nice uh, fish scale looking or well, not really fish scale but almost like a chain mail or something uh, look to it and on the sides there you can see because I didn't do a finishing pass for any of those we've got these ridges down here but that's okay that should be like about 0.1 millimeters stick out from the actual final um, wall that we're looking for the holes on the inside are the same they have uh, a little bit left to cut off and we've managed to go down to what looks like about the thickness of a thin piece of paper at the bottom which is just perfect because the next cut I want to cut through that paper at the bottom and also just take off this uh, tiny bit on the sides Okay, well that didn't quite go as I was hoping it would. It did cut through, all the way through the bottom, so that's nice, but it didn't really scrape the walls very well. Uh, let's see if we can get a good shot, there we go. So you can see right in the middle of the frame there, it hasn't even really touched the wall there. But there are a few spots where it did, like over there you can see a couple of parts have been smoothed off. So that's what the whole thing should look like. And instead we've got most of it looking very ripply still. But it's going to be fine like that, like this piece I probably could have just made by hand to be honest. Um, in fact I could have just used the MDF one. <laughs> the MDF one that's on there would be perfectly fine even when the whole machine is aluminium, it doesn't really need to be that strong. Um, but it's, since it's perfectly serviceable I will keep it and use it of course. And I think I'll just leave the edge like that as a memento of my uh, beginner's inadequacies when I was still getting things sorted out. I'm just checking the fit against the laser cut one and it looks to be pretty much spot on it's going to be hard for you to tell on camera there but if I take these 8mm bolts oops, well they go through here like that through both all the way through there and uh, I should be doing this at daytime shouldn't I anyway they go all the way through and these holes here in my one at least they take a 12 millimeter object fairly easily oh shit sorry 
was looking at the hole. Yeah, so they, they take a 12mm thing just nicely. For some reason the laser cut ones don't. Oh, so there's about about that much play on there. So it's really, uh, I think the, the squaring that I did earlier play, paid off because everything's matching up nicely. Yeah, so I don't know why the laser cut ones, they don't want to go in at all. And I actually ran a 12mm drill through there just before, so it's funny that it still doesn't want to go through, but I'm just going to leave it like that for now because there's a pretty good chance that those large bolts that go through there, those big ones there, I've noticed that bolts tend to have a little bit of play in them anyway, so like, if I put this in here, they, t they tend to be a little bit smaller than the thing that they're going through, a decent amount of play there. So anyway, if the 12mm the bolts that I'm going to use are slightly smaller than that, it might be just fine. If not, I'll just have to file a little bit till the bolts go in. But I want those to be a snug fit, so uh, not going to do anything just yet. Okay, the next job for tonight is to put a massive big pocket in here. This is 12mm plate, and we're going to put a 6mm pocket all the way around here, about the size of the NEMA 34 motor. And then we're going to put a, another 2mm slightly smaller pocket inside that. And this is the mo uh, Z-Motor mount plate, which is here. And the reason we want to do that is because, hopefully you can see down there, that the motor shaft doesn't really come through very far. It's just enough to run it in the way that it is at the moment, but that's with a 10mm plate, and that plate that we're just looking at is going to be 12mm, so it's actually going to be 2mm lower. So we want to bring this whole motor height up a bit. It's not going to be bending like that when we're using the aluminium one either. The reason why it's bending, by the way, is that these motors, um, this is not the front of the motor. There's actually another little bit that's about one and a half millimeters higher in a circle around there. And that's why we're having the extra little bit of pocket inside there as well. Well, I'll show you when I've finished. And for this one, I'm going to try a different end mill. Uh, single flute and I have four of these that were given to me a while ago and I don't really know if they're like carbide or just steel or whatever but um, they look like they are made for a bit more hogging out kind of work because there's a big space there being just a single flute and um, there's nothing wrong with the one I was using so this is the one I've been using until now this is also four millimeters and it seems to be perfectly sharp still at least as far as I can tell just by touching it with my fingers doesn't even seem to have changed at all, even after all the work that it's done so far. So I'm quite pleased with this. This is the one that I've ordered a couple more of. I think I'm going to increase the spindle speed a bit. Feeling a bit vibrating. Oh, I should have just paused that. Um, yeah, seemed to be vibrating quite a bit there. I think I might just go back to the other end mill that I was using before. This is a different material now. I'm not using the um, six millimeter plate that I had before. This is a 5083 from the laser cut place, so it's a little bit different material too. Uh, just didn't seem to like that very much. Here's the chips that that cut was making. Um, they look pretty good actually, but they are quite large. Probably a little bit too large for what this cutter should be doing. Um, and over here, you can hopefully you can see there's sort of a smudged lip lip bit on the edge there where it's cut. It's not clean. Uh, so it just sort of seemed like maybe that tool. Oh yeah, you look over there. It's not a very clean edge there, eh? So it just seemed like maybe that tool wasn't very sharp. Okay, here it comes. Fuzzy sounding, but doing a much better job.
I should calculate how many cubic centimeters of aluminium that just removed. Perfect. Since that went so well, I thought I might do the same for the y-axis motor because we have the same problem with a 12mm plate. The motor shaft doesn't really stick through that much. It's almost halfway. I think it might be around about, yeah, probably halfway. But halfway is not much. Um, so I'd like to put a pocket on the back of here as well. But I'm not going to go so deep on this one because we actually want to have some bolts coming in like that. And uh, I've got it ready to go here. So this is the area that's going to get pocketed, same as before. And we want some bolts in there. Uh, so I <laughs> don't want to go too crazy taking material away from this area. So I'm just going to go down 2 millimeters for the whole area. And then um, another 2 millimeters, of course, for the more roundy section. Uh, I don't think I'll film this. Uh, it's just the same as before. So I'll just show you when it's finished. Okay, so that turned out pretty damn nice again. I'm really amazed at this end mill. It's um, starting to show a little bit of wear, like the tip of it is looking a bit frosted. Uh, the same as the chips, like one side of the chips is shiny and one side's frosted looking. And that's what the tip of this is starting to look like there, but it's still performing amazingly well. Um, that's one of those, by the way. Uh, Whatever, I don't know where they come from, but <laughs> I'll be buying more of them, or I already have. Um, so yeah, everything worked quite well, and we narrowly avoided a disaster here, because I forgot that this bottom area where these screws are has to have a plate butted up against it. Uh, so if we had have gone much further into there, we might have been in trouble, but um, it's going to be a 10 mil plate like that, and so it's going to have to be, or it should be, like that, because we want the bolt to go right through the middle of this plate. Uh, any more than that would have been a bit of a nuisance, but that 2mm overhang is okay. So all it cost me is a little bit of extra time that I had to wait for it to cut something unnecessarily. Uh, other than that, everything uh, seems to be pretty good. Okay, so that's that done and turned out pretty nice. And we've left eight millimeters there, oh no, actually 10 millimeters in that thicker part, and then eight millimeters in the middle because, as well as the problem that I was saying with the bolts having to go in there, this piece is supposed to be taking a lot of the rigidity or providing a lot of the rigidity of the sides, so we don't want to reduce it too much. This other one for the Z motor mount, all this does is hold the motor there, so it's not really providing rigidity during cutting, so that's why we went quite deep into that one. Uh, so since these were going so well, I thought <laughs> I might as well do some um, machining on the back for the X motor there. Now this is even less necessary than the other two because you can see there it has a keyway in there. This one is also only coming through about halfway, but because of the keyway it's not relying on um, a grub screw to, to you know provide the turning force. Uh, so yeah, this one really did not need to be done, but I'm going to do that anyway, and, oh wait a minute, oh, oh silly me, I've already done that. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you have a machine that's so quick and efficient. Look at this lovely MDF, it's working so well. Um, <laughs> but I think that's probably as much of the, that kind of machining that I'm going to do for now, because to be honest, I've just been kind of putting off some of the more difficult problems that I have to deal with. Um, one of which is this. So we saw that that plate over there was bending. We have the same problem with this one, unfortunately. Um, so if I hold this down there so that it's flat, and we look at the other end, there's a good, hmm, possibly even four millimeters lifting up there. And also going this way, that's flat on there. And it's uh, not so bad in this direction, that's probably somewhere between one and two millimeters, although it's not, it's not all the way across. It would probably be two millimeters if it was going all the way to there. However, this bowing out in that direction, 
actually doesn't really matter that much. Can you guess why? Can anybody guess why? I'll give you two seconds. Pause the video if you want to think about it. The reason is because on this axis we're using round rails. If we were using square rails here, the flatness of the base that it's mounted on from side to side would be a huge problem. But because they're round and these, uh, these carriages, they don't really sit particularly straight relative to what it's underneath it. They can rotate a bit, so it actually doesn't matter. It's not ideal, obviously, but in the overall scheme of things, um, I think I'm not really going to concern myself with that too much because what, what we do need to do is, of course, have these rails parallel. That's paramount. But whether the floor underneath them is flat doesn't really matter because we can surface whatever uh, wasteboard we're using like we've been doing there. Um, but for this direction, where it's bowing out that way, that is kind of a problem. So what I did to first try and fix that is I put that 60 by 30 channel on the same way as I have it on here, lying flat down, because that's what I was going to do anyway. And unfortunately, all that did was bend the extrusion, uh, so that wasn't going to work. But then I tried standing it up like that, and just clamping it down, and wouldn't you know it, that straightened the aluminium panel, which I was really pleased to see. And uh, yeah, at first I was really annoyed that I had to buy so much of this extrusion. The reason I bought so much is because they only sold it in 6 meter lengths, and they wouldn't, they would cut it for me, so I could put it in my car and bring it home. Uh, but they didn't want to sell it in anything less than six meters and at first I was really annoyed and I actually put it off for about a month and a half because I was trying to figure out some other way to avoid having to buy that but what I've noticed as I get older is that sometimes things like that at first seem very annoying if you just sort of wait a bit something comes along that turns out to be actually quite convenient so I didn't get mad about it and uh, here we go something that's convenient so what I'm going to have to do so one there and one sort of in, in a bit there. And I'll put the other two, oh, so these would be on the bottom, obviously, underneath the table. And then the other two <coughs> will be as they were, as they are already on the mock-up. They'll be just along the side. So between the four of them, that's going to straighten things up quite nicely. Um, one other thing I noticed about this sheet is that, can you see a little bit of colour change there towards the right-hand side? This is the last little bit here just there is a slightly different color and I think they may have I don't know how they make these things but do they join two different pieces at some point when they're making a big roll of this stuff because what I noticed is that it's actually quite straight and flat until it gets to that color change and then there's a bit of a bow that goes down like that in this bit and fortunately for me that bit that goes down a bit there is on the uh, the back end of the table so this this in here where I've got these holes is where my X motor is going to be. This is going to be the front where I do most of my work here. This bit up the back, as it happens, the machine can't even get there. So cutting head is there and the back of the gantry has got another 10 or 11 centimeters to go. So it can get that far back or about, about to here, which is just perfectly on that section that's not going to be flat. So. In theory, what I could do, since my cutter's never going there, is I could only concern myself with keeping everything flat up to here, and maybe just, uh, maybe even just let this rail sit up a little bit and not clamp it down as much there. And the other reason why that's actually a little bit convenient is, if it's going to be going down or up here, one way or the other, I'd rather it be going down, because I'm going to be trying to get liquid to drain off in this area here. So I actually don't mind at all if, if it goes down a little bit like that. So it's strangely all working out. Yeah, so there's a lot of things in this project that are just not quite right, but nothing's a super annoying showstopper kind of thing, so I can work around everything. And I've decided that what I should do, now that I have a machine that can, it's actually square now, I haven't had any problems since I used the, the nicer, more expensive squares that I bought. Um, what I should probably do is make all of these plates that I have in aluminum, of, whoop, aluminium, sorry, what happened there? Um, I should make them all out of MDF in the same sizes that the, the aluminium machine will be because I don't know if I've mentioned this before but there's a little bit of a problem in that these rails on this base plate here are actually a few millimeters too wide 
wider than the aluminium laser cut pieces will be. So I can't just, I, if I used the, if I made the aluminium base plate with these rails, I couldn't just take this gantry and put it on it because it wouldn't fit. But if I use the machine to now um, make the, the right size pieces of MDF, everything will line up a lot nicer and I'll be able to make this piece much squarer and I won't have any nod in the spindle because at the moment it's sort of nodding it's uh, nodding down like that, not that much but maybe two degrees or one and a half to two degrees or something but I could probably get rid of all that problem and then I could do some more machining on the the actual aluminium plates because I'm starting to get the idea that I might even try now that I've found that the machine can do alum, aluminium fairly competently and I have end mills that are just amazing, this thing's still going, no problems at all. What I could probably do is I could do my own face milling of this piece, right? Because it doesn't actually need to be completely milled off. That's what the um, engineering shop would have done if I took it to them, but I could probably machine this bit and that bit flat without too much trouble because it doesn't need to go deep especially on this bit it's only going to be like probably less than a millimeter actually this is actually quite straight so thinking about maybe giving that a try and if that goes well and I can get the the bed the main bed of the machine nice and flat I might even try machining underneath where these rails are going to go along with the six millimeter recess for the mounts for the spool screw um, so at this point I've pretty much decided I'm not going to get the engineering shop to do anything. Um, yeah, so it's all, it's all slowly, slowly coming together and my, my constant problem is knowing what exactly I should be doing next. Um, but right now, back to this problem, I think what I should be doing next is getting these rails mounted. So that gives me a new problem and <laughs> everything leads to something else. It's a huge rabbit hole. So what I need to do now I'm going to use these 6mm screws that are, I think, 60mm long. And I want to make them so that they go in there like that, but they don't break through to the top. Because I'd like to leave the top all nice and smooth if I can. So what I need is a 10mm hole, and then a bottom tap for an M6 bolt that will tap it all the way down to 10mm, or maybe 11 is fine, just as long as it doesn't go all the way through. And I'm going to need to drill some nice straight holes in this massive big sheet that I cannot get onto my drill press and I don't think I'm going to be able to drill as precisely like that by hand. So what am I going to do? Well you'll see in the next video because this one is getting way too long. Thanks for watching and uh, happy Christmas. It's uh, Christmas Day here you can see it's, uh, it's about 8pm but still very very light. Anyway, see you next time.